All right. Uh, good evening, everyone. Welcome to this March 2021 Southern Fried DNN user group meeting. Uh, we are happy to uh, see a lot of uh, friendly faces. We've got some new folks with us. We've got some uh, regulars with us. And overall, we're going to look forward to a fun um, time period here where we're going to primarily do a recap and uh, kind of a, a, a after, after session review of uh, the DNN Summit virtual conference that was held at the very end of February, February the 24th, 25th. Uh, we all gathered online in the hop-in system and um, a couple hundred people strong uh, participated in two days of conferences um, and sessions and speakers and camaraderie and it was uh, a lot of fun. Uh, for those of you who are watching this video playback and you're catching me in the sun, I apologize for that. It's been gray clouds for about two weeks here and uh, uh, today now all of the sun comes out while I'm on video. I will have my glory day in the sun. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Um, but uh, as we do, as we start off every uh, Southern Fried, uh, we're going to uh, jump into some of the information that's out there uh, from the community, uh, because we always like to start off with community buzz uh, and things in general. Um, at this point, uh, one of the things that happened um, really at the, the beginning of February, but after our last um, meeting, uh, was the release of the newest version for DNN 9.9.0. Um, I don't see the participant list on my screen, but do we have uh, Daniel with us today? Maybe he'd like to speak to uh, it a little bit, or David, would you like to? No, he's under the weather a bit, uh, so I don't mm. think he'll be joining tonight. But uh, oh, yeah, so this, one, this is a pretty good release. Um, yeah, I mean, you can look at the release notes there, but uh, a lot of contributions mm. and... Uh, I think uh, a total of like around 48 or so uh, pull requests on this one. Uh, and the number of contributors that, that led up to that was really great. So it was good mm -hmm. seeing some additional contributions come in. And uh, there's one little gotcha there that you'll see a special attention section to that uh, you probably want to pay attention to if you're using a third party commercial module or a, you know, a one that's custom that is using MailKit as the uh, delivery system for emails. Uh, so you wanna kind of watch for that one because you may run into some issues uh, with that particular module, but it's pretty easy workaround uh, to deal with that. But yeah, it was great. Well, uh, let's talk about that for just a moment um, because um, different mail providers is but it's a new feature, is it not? Uh, because we've really had core or custom modules built and rolled their own, that they uh, kept internal to those modules. Uh, but this now provides uh, more flexibility for you to have um, other mail providers than the default mail provider, right? Yeah, and you, uh, yeah, that's that's a great point. So MailKit gives the ability to uh, ease more easily, I should say, I guess, use uh, providers like Office 365 that, that have a bit different way of doing things and you don't have to jump through as many hoops. And it opens the door for a lot of other providers kind of like, you know, SendGrid and things like that, That's, using those. That was my first thought. Way, you know, not just through a user account and password, but actually using the API to, to uh, authenticate and pass along uh, on there. But yeah, this, this is kind of the first step into that. Um, there's a little bit of work still to do on this, but it's good to see this in there and have those options. Yeah, it's, a, it's the start of building out more, right? Absolutely. All right. Um, well, so um, as we would stress anytime we talk about uh, DNN upgrades, one of the primary things to remember is that uh, some of the best things you can do for server performance, uh, for security, for the general health of your DNN systems is to do what you can to stay updated to the latest version. Um, as we finish out to the nine level of DNN, uh, there's been so much work gone into um, updating uh, different issues, uh, updating um, security related things. Uh, just the fact that we're moving a couple of small versions beyond the very first time that we could remove or fully remove Telerik from a DNN instance. Um, these are all great things. Um, so if you haven't already gotten up to the higher DNN nines, um, then it's time to get started. Uh, if nothing else, you wanna make sure that you're not left behind um, and are 
already up to the higher nines before we start moving on further beyond that. Um, all right, uh, well, uh, just kind of talking about community buzz, uh, one of the things that we'll do when we are, um, you know, kind of checking out buzz is we'll look into the community and see what's going on. And um, uh, Dean and Dave, uh, Dave Poindexter's uh, other online persona here, um, spent some time uh, with our other guest online here tonight, uh, Aaron Lopez, um, doing a video where they talked about those Facebook meta tags, the open graph uh, tags that are in my book primarily used for Facebook. I, I don't know, they might be used for tons of other things, uh, but that's where I first uh, became aware of them. Uh, but he just posted a, a video on YouTube recently where they did uh, kind of a, a deep dive and review and edits uh, of things with um, getting that set up in your DNN instance. Uh, David, do you want to talk about that for just a moment? And we'll encourage folks to go take a look at that video. Oh, heck, let Aaron talk about it a little bit. Uh, he's the hey, star on that. <laughs> <laughs> I think I've talked enough about it, but um, yeah, it, so those open graph cards, they were created by Facebook and it works for Facebook links, but they also um, are leveraged by Twitter. So your tweets work with that too. And uh, even, even your iPhone message works with it too. So you see nice cards when you get that. I'm not sure about other social sites, but I'm sure they, they leverage that uh, protocol as well. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that was a lot of fun doing doing another DNN Day video. So uh, I'll say that, uh, you know, if we're kind of doing a review of DNN Summit, which was a conference where people come to get training and listen to speakers present material and content, uh, one of the takeaways that we hopefully imparted to people who were participating was that uh, they can get that kind of content every month uh, when they do things like you know, stop by Southern Fried DNN, when we meet on the third Thursday of every month, and you know, with other community content that's out there. You know, Aaron, you put this together. This is a session. This is good quality information that people want to know how to do. So um, uh, thank you for, uh, for doing this and spending time with Dave online. Well, thanks for Dave for setting it up. Uh, when we uh, post the notes out of the video uh, today uh, on the Southern Fried site, we'll both post a video, but we'll also post all the links uh, to the different things and we'll put up a, a link specifically to the YouTube channel for Dan and Dave and uh, this particular video. Um, so the other section that we'll head to for uh, Community Buzz is on the DNN Community website. Uh, the dnncommunity.org site is our community location for posting articles and blogs. And it's really the home of the new forum where people can you know, get engaged to ask questions that are gonna stay around and people can help each other with those answers. Uh, there was a recent uh, blog post um, and with embarrassment, I'll, I'll mention that I'm just going to go right back to saying Tycho because that's just my default uneducated English uh, American speaker. Um, David, we pronounce his name? Tijo. 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 Uh, Tijo, who I love, even though I can't pronounce his name uh, when I'm not thinking about it. Uh, wrote up a great article uh, about solving some basic SEO issues uh, and things. Uh, he mentions that the newer versions of DNN 9 have made some strides to update and make some things a little bit better off, but that in older DNN instances, it's not rocket science to get some of these things fixed up, but you might have to know where to look or where to go. And he describes a few things that you can do as SQL queries to just gauge the health of your pages just for their meta titles and their descriptions and if the descriptions are too long. And uh, this article you know, really walks you through those things. And any article or tip that, um, that relies on SQL or has SQL as part of what you're doing to do that optimization uh, has a special place in my heart uh, because Dustin and myself, uh, we really sometimes feel like we're the only ones focusing on DNN management through the database directly. Um, it's a big part of what we do, and he even finishes the article um, in a way that I really appreciate. Um, uh, because we do this kind of thing all the time with the modules that we like to build with. Um, we work with Xmon Pro uh, heavily, and we build little monitors or little dashboards with Xmon Pro all the time. And he kind of finishes uh, by describing that. And I love that he mentions that uh, in this particular example with these SQL queries, uh, he then put together a, a little dashboard module um, and he is using uh, Plantin app. Uh, so he's using different DNN Sharp 
uh, tools to basically make this so that he has a little admin screen that he could just glance at and see that he might have 55 pages with no description um, or 40 pages with no title, uh, with no specific meta title. Um, so he made his own little thing, but he describes at the end that, you know, once you've got the sequel, you could build this with anything that you like to work with. Too sexy. Forms and lists. Um, you could build it with uh, other DNN Sharp items. You could build it with Xbox Pro. Uh, anything you like. So it's a, it's a good little read. And um, I think of articles like this as a stepping stone. You might look at it and think, well, I don't really need to do search engine um, optimization of my content. That's not really what I'm concerned with. But the approach that he gives and then the idea of making a dashboard tool and putting it on a page, that might inspire you to make a dashboard tool for something that you use. Uh, so it might not be SQL, but you start working on those queries and you start making those things. Maybe it becomes the user audit list and you uh, start to get some little tags on the users who haven't logged in within uh, the past 60 days and uh, the people who've created an account but never logged in or you know, whatever the stats are that you need to see. Um, he gives a good description of, of how to make a little dashboard about that. Uh, so I appreciated that. And again, that's on the DNA community site and it's over in the blogs section, which is where uh, you know, many of us are posting uh, articles often for new information. Um, I'll come back to that uh, in just a moment because we have a couple from Will Stroll that we're going to bring up. But um, before I switch over to DNN Summit, um, David, uh, are there any other things uh, community buzz wise that uh, we should you, you feel like we've missed and we should uh, talk about before we move on? I am probably totally unqualified for that question right now because I've been so busy. I don't know what's you going have. on. <laughs> You've been your head down, um, and that happens after a conference too. We do so much work in the buildup to prepare for the conference. Uh, we don't pay attention to all the other things that are going on. Um, I'll throw the uh, <laughs> I'll throw the um, question out to the uh, group in general. Anybody else have uh, DNA community things that you want to bring to our attention or throw out there for some uh, some quick conversation? All right, going once. Come on, Jeremy. Come on, Jeremy. You know something. <laughs> what am i supposed to start talking about randomizing things or what absolutely yeah <laughs> <laughs> jeremy recently updated the dna community site uh ryan if you go over to the uh agencies area uh there you go he just updated that to make it look nice and, and look envision is not at the top see <laughs> uh, you're 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 killing me here and, uh, but he made this look a whole heck of a lot better than it did before and operate uh quite quite better uh nice you go to a detail of any of those and um see that information you're probably in there somewhere aren't you myself yes uh, but it's random now i don't know how to find it <laughs> <laughs> that's true i can fix um, that uh that's uh, that is fantastic, and I'll tell you. Uh, if Maybe we don't, a little uh, search. I don't know if we get any other, uh, you know, uh, points into it uh, that's more valuable than mentioning that uh, the community site is community run and community supported. And if you have ideas on how to make it better, if you want to roll your sleeves up and do work in the site, or if you just want to write articles and put things in place, um, there's a place for everybody to participate in the uh, in the DNA community website. Yeah, and Will actually found a bug in here today that he uh, showed me. So I actually have the code up on screen and I'm staring at it while you've been talking. And I think I just figured out the fix. If you right. click on uh, United, click on the category United States of America. Uh -huh. Now yeah. click on United States up in the filters again. Uh -huh. And now the filtering is totally broken. I see. It doesn't ever yeah, come back. to get yeah. other people. Even if you yeah. leave and go to someone else and then come back again? Okay. It's only when works. you click it a second huh. time. Huh. It's only when you click it a second time, it then just goes nuts. Yeah. But I think I found the problem. All right. Um, uh, how's the open graph uh, metadata on these? Uh, that uh, would be a nice crossover right there, right? <laughs> there you go. There you go. Connect the dots. <laughs> go, Aaron. <All right. laughs> 
All right, folks. Uh, well, thanks. Uh, let's uh, put on some more things if we uh, want to bring them in. Uh, David mentions that we need copywriters, we need content, um, uh, we need people to pay attention to and to help put some love into the site. Uh, always appreciate it. Um, well, we have as a main topic today, uh, the kind of wrap up or the um, recap of the DNN Summit, um, uh, DNN Summit conference that was put on here at the very end of February. Um, I'm not sure if it's still being promoted. Uh, we've got some cleanup to do uh, on the DNN Summit website and on a few other places, but uh, I believe earlier this week, it was still being promoted on the DNN store and in the DNN community website as you know, coming soon and active. Um, you know, the, the conference was uh, the end of February, February 24 and 25. It was at the very end of a week. So we were kind of able to finish out the week by participating in and doing things in the, uh, in the conference, two days. And this is the first time that it was virtual. Uh, obviously 2020 and um, COVID and quarantine situations have made it that uh, we scrambled to figure out what to do. Uh, 2019 uh, DNN Summit, which with a giant sun that we can see, but I'm you know, wearing my, uh, my staff shirt for, for DNN Summit Orlando. Um, and we had a great time in, in 2019 for DNN Summit in person. Uh, and for 2020, it was the very end of February that we were in Orlando and uh, we were just starting to hear about this, this virus that might be going around. And we, we just started hearing about things that were happening and Italy sounded really rough at that point in time. And we were as a group doing things like um, going to Disney World and getting on rides and touching things that everyone else touched and uh, standing in long queues to get uh, in to go see um, the uh, you know, Smuggler's Run or the Galaxy's Edge Star Wars things at, uh, uh, at Orlando. And it was kind of surreal because at that time we all said, that, should we be worried about all this stuff that's coming up? This is kind of weird. Um, and we felt very lucky to have had that 2020 conference that particular week. If it had been another week or two later, we would have not been able to have it. Um, it would have been a disaster. Um, so we kind of had that in a special moment in 2020 and began then planning out what to do for um, for 2021, and um, I, uh, you know, the the group uh, basically moved quickly to work in an online format to have a virtual uh, DNN summit that was run through the Hopin system. Uh, Gifford Watkins uh, has uh, a lot of experience with the Hopin system, and that was kind of my first uh, experience of seeing it uh, when he did a conference back in the fall last year, kind of as a almost a proof of concept. Hey, this can work. Um, and um, we had a, a wonderful time. Um, I'm going to kind of pass it to David and we'll, we'll pass it back and forth and we'll kind of go around to the, the group here. Um, but um, it, was, it was probably the most uh, successful DNN Summit conference we've had in a while in terms of just overall dedicated engagement of participants. Um, I love going to Florida and Denver and, and Charlotte when we've had our, our conferences in Charlotte. I love moving around. I love seeing people in person. But there's something to be said for having a conference where everyone can join from around the country. There's no travel expenses and they can you know, miss half of it because they got to do a work conference and then jump back into the, the DNN Summit and continue. Um, it, was, it was very successful. Um, David, what, uh, you want to give uh, some of your thoughts about just the overall uh, presence and, and uh, you know, what we saw there for a couple of days? Yeah, I mean, yeah, it was, I, you know, it's funny because like, Ryan, I think you and I have talked about this, you know, like the idea of a virtual conference wasn't something that I honestly got very excited about uh, just because I'm like, gosh, how that's going to work. You know, I'm going to be distracted. I'm going to be doing work and I'm going to be sitting in my normal environment. Is this, how does this really work and all that? I was pleasantly surprised with how engaging it was. Of course, it was different. We all wanted to be in person, but it was very, uh, it was very interactive. I liked the uh, idea of like the meeting, <laughs> the uh, not meeting, uh, networking uh, feature. Although I didn't get to use it, 
I was so busy. <laughs> I was busy um, chatting with other people, but I heard that was really cool. Kind of like speed networking or speed dating. Kind speed of dating, yes. yes. Uh, get matched up with you. And I heard a lot of people saying that was really cool uh, to, yeah. to do that. And of course, we, we had expo booths. So it was really nice to have people come in, go on camera and ask questions and you know, get, I think like Will Stroll was doing free support, you know, and the expo, that was kind of cool. And uh, a lot of cool conversation with that. The speaker experience was really good. The content was great because I, I attended like every slot except for maybe one uh, where I was having some technical difficulties with the platform, but it was a great experience. I mean, I, I was pleasantly surprised. Pleasantly surprised is, you know, to, to, to describe it, I think that you and I, uh, within the DNN uh, Summit Group, uh, within the committee of people helping run and put things together, um, I think you and I were both very vocal about how much we get out of being in person. And I was, I was surprised at how rewarding and engaging it was. I did not expect that um, we would engage in the same way. I was thinking more like Zoom meetings and, and presentations where everyone just sits back and no one gets involved but it was much more like a, a whole series of Southern Fried meetups. Everyone was asking questions. Everyone was participating. Uh, there were just as many jokes as there were really solid, good questions and people getting help um, with things that they're asking for. So it was a lot, a lot more engaging than I was, I was expecting it to be. You know, Ryan, the one thing that really stood out to me above all of that was that um, there were so many people attending that probably would never have come to an actual in-person event. Mm -hmm. So we got to meet so many people that just weren't, you know, able to either come to the events or not, you know, maybe timing was wrong, maybe locale was an issue or mm -hmm. budget was an issue or anything like that. So it really made it affordable, you know, and, and possible for a lot of people that we had never even met that had been in the community for years. So it was really great to hear their stories and, you know, engage with them. That, that's a perfect description. Um, uh, I spent a lot of time in that, um, you know, uh, speed networking uh, section, and I was just, ju just like you do in person, asking people, what do you do with DNN? Hey, how are you finding the conference? Um, you know, what, what do you like getting into? What, what do you focus on? And I talked with so many who were saying exactly what you just said, that, you um, they had wanted to come to conferences in the past. It was always on their radar, but their boss couldn't afford to send them and they couldn't be afford to be out for two days. However, suddenly when it was in, you know, online and they could stay back in their office, then the boss paid for four people to have tickets to participate. So we had four people online, whereas we weren't even, you know, you know benefiting from the one person uh, being able to travel before. And they said, travel costs, not a problem. Being able to be still present if you need to jump back into your job for some fire that might come up, uh, you know, also a bonus. Um, and then also, you know, for some people who just don't like to, to travel that far for a conference, um, we got to see all of them. So it was, uh, it was really nice. Um, there were some stats about the attendees. And we often at, at DNN conferences, um, we will uh, kind of at the closing ceremony, we will ask everyone to stand up who's never been to a DNA conference before and inevitably 40 to 50% of people stand up in the room um, who that was their very first time. Um, and we had that same kind of number again. Uh, we just had a lot more people in general. So uh, in addition to the speakers and the sponsors and the people who were putting it on, um, we had a, you know, a large amount of people. So I could, I could roughly guesstimate that we had 100 you know, people who this was their first conference and we hadn't met them before. Um, and that was really fantastic. That was really fantastic. Um, so uh, kind of the structure of what we'll do here is uh, I have a few screenshots and I have a few um, screens that I'm going to pull up and we're just going to uh, kind of invite some conversation about uh, the things that you saw at Summit and uh, the things that were present. Um, one of the things that I will uh, start off with is uh, some of the screenshots to just uh, talk a little bit about what uh, you know, what goes on at um, at at the, at the conference and then what it looks like. Um, here, I've brought up on screen inside of my screen capture program, so you don't have to ignore the wrapper. But um, you know, this is a screenshot from within the Hop In program, 
And uh, on the left-hand side, you end up having your uh, different sections of things that we used during the conference. Uh, so there was, uh, to start off with, a, a reception area that uh, was kind of you know, the beginning area that had some how-to information and documents about you know, what was going on at that point in time. Uh, the stage was an area where uh, we had our larger um, all-conference um, communications. Uh, so the opening ceremony was on the stage, uh, the closing ceremony, the keynote, uh, those things were all on the stage. And whenever something was going on, um, there would be these little icons that would show you, hey, there's something going on here, there's something going on over here. So you could always check out what was fresh and what was live um, while going around this, uh, this conference. Uh, while the sessions were running, uh, you would click over here and you would see uh, of our different rooms. We had five rooms open at, at all times and you could see uh, who was up and who was on and, and you know, uh, giving their different sessions as it rolled through every, every point. Uh, the networking section is uh, where you go for that aforementioned uh, networking, speed, speed dating, speed networking. Um, pretty nifty, pretty nifty feature. Um, I enjoy and uh, get a lot of benefit out of meeting people at conferences. Um, in my company, we, we meet new clients, we meet new freelancers to work with us. Uh, I, I'm an out, you know, I'm an extrovert, outgoing kind of person. Um, so I get a lot out of being in person and asking people questions and just talking with people and making connections. Um, this speed networking online did a good job of that. Uh, you said you were available, it got started, um, it put you together with the next person who was free, and then you had, I think, 60 seconds, um, maybe 100 seconds, uh, to start off with for some introductions. And if you wanted to stay, you could click a button and stay. If it was a bad connection or it was somebody you'd already talked with before, uh, you just click the button again and it would you know, rotate again and bring you on another person. Um, and while I was doing that, it dawns on me that um, I think some people who are a little more shy, you know, maybe some wallflowers who enjoy being at events, but they don't necessarily want to walk up to a stranger and say, hello, my name is XYZ, who are you? Um, this kind of lowers that threshold and, and gets it so that everybody can participate a little bit more. So that uh, networking was a lot of fun. Um, and then the expo booths uh, were the sections for our sponsors. Uh, there were a couple of other booths uh, that were also in there, uh, for instance, um, my team and I and, and some others uh, with Dean and Summit um, helped participate in the virtual help desk. So if you had questions during the conference and you wanted to know how does the video system work or you're having some technical difficulties or uh, you, I mean, we had people show up and say, hey, I am a DNN administrator and of these sessions that are coming up next, I don't know anything about them. Which one would you think I'm going to get the most out of? So we would you know, give some tips and suggestions and tell people where to you know, head and, oh, you know, if you're doing this, you do, definitely don't want to miss this next session three hours from now. So um, you know, we kind of ran a, a help desk booth uh, there so people could post questions and or you know, communicate. Um, but at the same time, um, uh, that section of the expo um, had all of our sponsor booths for the uh, higher level sponsors. So the uh, sponsor booths were places where you could get some PowerPoint presentation or video uh, content about the particular sponsors and you know learn a little bit more about them. And then when they were live, it was just like stopping by their booth. Um, it was an open chat. Uh, you got to hang out. Um, the uh, awards, in my opinion, would go out. Um, there was a video for 10 Pound Gorilla that was slick. It was a very well put together marketing presentation and made me made me excited. Made me want to just go and and talk to 10 pound and, and join their team because it, it, it really showed their, their offices and their structure of people in such a great light. And I thought that's, that's good quality marketing right there. Uh, the award for most popular then would go to uh, Will Stroll's booth um, uh, after hours when everyone was kind of leaving sessions and starting to sign off and go home um, or if they were already home, just quit work. Um, he had a party he had 10 or 12 people in there and they were all getting shots and things and uh, started to have a, a fun after hours party at uh, uh, <laughs> at the up endo uh, will stroll booth so uh, the sponsor booths were always uh, promoted in between sessions that you can go and check out things there um, will stroll did spend a fair amount of time um, 
uh, answer questions for people, having open, you know, open help questions. Uh, so it's a, it's a lot of fun. Um, here, this screen that I've had up for just a moment or two um, is some of the thanks that uh, Cassidy was going through in the beginning of the uh, opening session uh, or, or the, the beginning of the keynote um, to just talk a little bit about the, the folks that are putting together DNN Summit. And uh, I want to reiterate that and, and kind of run through that. Uh, Cassidy Peterson is the president of the uh, DNN. Uh, oh, shoot, David, the, the, the name just left us. <laughs> DNN Association, I was like, um, org, uh, group. Uh, uh, DNN Association is the organization that puts on uh, DNN Summit. And Cassidy Pearson is uh, the president. Uh, she participates in uh, in the meetings and organizing things. Uh, one of the key strengths that she brings to things is uh, that organization standpoint and uh, has been instrumental in finding locations uh, when we're in physical locations. And uh, we started off DNN Summit in her Denver home. Um, kind of going by seniority of people on the on the board. Uh, Mitch Sellers uh, is listed as security treasurer because he helped incorporate, um, but uh, really he's uh, you know one of the key drives uh, behind DNN Summit, helps organize um, all of the sessions and the organization for the calendar of when sessions are gonna be and who the speakers uh, are going to be and um, you know, that level of uh, heavy lifting, uh, Mitch, really drives and puts together. Uh, David Poindexter has been instrumental in working on the DNN Summit website um, and overall, uh, just uh, general at large uh, work inside the board. Um, I put myself in that same category as well. Uh, when we have in-person um, DNN Summits, uh, then I have been uh, traditionally in charge of training and uh, doing the day of training and getting all those VMs uh, set up and all of our instructors prepared for the courses they're gonna um, teach. Uh, so normally I do training and uh, physically in person, we'll do a lot of gopher work, uh, helping run video cables here and, and converters over there and things like that. Uh, and my, my team and I will help do that and check in and you know, some of the physical hands-on stuff. So this time virtually, uh, we did some similar types of thing. I need an um, HDMI adapter, Ryan, do you have one? Yeah, absolutely. I, I mean, seriously, I would travel with about six uh, when I would go to the summits and mysteriously, I'd come back with three and I have no idea where the rest uh, find their way off to, right? What is VGA? <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Oh, did I say VGA adapter? Like, oh, that's just okay. <laughs> uh, you know, I got, I got a, I got a Mac lightning cable to uh, VGA right there. If I, if I look on the desk, I might have an S video somewhere. Um, anyways, uh, you know, also rounding out uh, folks that are in that planning committee. Uh, Mark Busick is uh, the president of the board and um, has generally been helping organize and, and present things. Um, same thing, Don Gingold, uh, you know, has helped this year as uh, the silky and golden voice of uh, DNN Summit uh, and has helped produce uh, not only some training videos, uh, but some uh, promotional videos as well for uh, DNN Summit. And uh, as a group, we get together and kind of help make some ideas happen and, and move it forward. And kind of towards the end of tonight's session, we'll talk a little bit about some ideas we're kicking around for for next year. Would love to get a, uh, a sampling from the people who are online with us here now tonight uh, to see what you think about some of the ideas we might be kicking around. And Mark just joined, just in case you uh, didn't see him sneak in. Yeah, no, I, I see him here now. I was just saying that uh, next year for 2022, Mark is doing all the heavy lifting and is going to be running everything. Uh, so we get to just step back. <laughs> well, I saw that coming. <laughs> Let me guess, it won't be too much developer content, huh? No, just kidding. <laughs> I, I just mentioned that. Um, I, I just mentioned that in a, in a planning meeting um, uh, we were having yesterday. Um, that the, the demographics of the attendees for this year um, gave a pretty good sign to show, um, you know, that we had perhaps 20 to 30% of people who were DNN administrators, DNN integrators, uh, DNN marketing um, user uh, type people. Um, and then we have developers and then we have um, kind of heavy lifting um, developers. And it uh, was a reiteration that we uh, should encourage a wide range of topics for the next 
uh, for the next conference uh, so that we don't have it be too focused on developer tracks or too focused on marketing tracks or too focused on module uh, usage and, and, and setup and incorporation tracks that we have a balance that reflects our uh, attendees. And this time we had a, a higher mix of attendees that were not primarily developers. And so that should go to help inform what we do next year. Um, so, you know, kind of rounding out this screen here, I kind of talked first about the, um, the left hand side of the screen, uh, the right hand side of the screen um, inside of Hopin had a lot of other good features. Um, here, this was kind of the beginning of the day and, uh, you know, I, I caught it uh, while we had 170 people actively online doing something. Um, so that was, uh, it was pretty good numbers and it got up higher. Um, I forget now at this point, but David, do you remember what, uh, the highest you saw numbers get to while you were doing things? I don't remember. I remember it being very high, but uh, 219 is, is it was over was 200. I, I remember it being over 200, but I don't remember the exact numbers. Yeah. yeah. Well, so, uh, you, you know, you got some information uh, up at the top right, uh, they gave you that. Um, there was a section of user information uh, where you could message people, you could get notifications, and you could uh, take a look at your own um, profile information and get that updated. Um, if you direct messaged people, that showed uh, here in this um, uh, mail paper airplane uh, kind of icon. And it took a little while for people to get used to or understand that that was there. Some people might have missed that, but you could direct message and talk with people you made a connection with. Um, but then on the, the bottom right hand side was the, the chat, the polls, the interactive participation uh, that you might be doing while you were in sessions or in the general open rooms. Uh, so it was, uh, it was interesting in that you could be chatting both in the overall conference, you could be chatting inside of just a session, um, and then you could switch over to the people section and find individual people and start messaging them and communicating with them. Um, so it's uh, any which way you want to participate. You could just sit there and watch or you could sit there and talk with people. Uh, there was a kind of a breadth of things that you could do to be interactive and get the most out of it. Uh, Ryan, I got, a kick, I got a kick out of uh, Daniel Velatis. He said that he had, uh, you know, he's got multiple monitors set up, you know, like a lot of students, right? And uh, during the sessions, he didn't miss any of them. He would listen to audio on one, but he would have all four sessions going at the same time in the oh, slot. Oh, no, really? And, uh, yeah, yeah, just kind of, you know, jumping between them and so forth. So that was, that was cool to hear how some people had done that. <laughs> <laughs> Well, um, so kind of moving away from this screen, I'm going to move on to a, you know, a couple of other things, uh, just as an example, um, on a session that um, my brother Dustin was the um, uh, monitor or facilitator, uh, while uh, Joseph Craig was uh, giving a presentation, he was giving a presentation on, in this particular one, uh, uh, Too Sexy. And uh, you could see that uh, you know Alessandra was there. She's here with us tonight. Uh, Alessandra was right in there, uh, you know, giving some much-needed heckling and, uh, and starting the conference uh, sessions off right. Uh, but uh, it was basically like any other type of online presentation. Once you're in there, you have your large um, meeting presentation screens, and then you get the video of the people who are participating. Uh, probably one of the nicer features of all of this is that then uh, we had monitors uh, sitting in the uh, each session helping facilitate relaying chat questions kind of being the co-pilot uh, so that the presenter could focus on what they were saying and doing and then that uh, monitor could help invite someone onto video chat and conversation if they wanted to or relaying the the chat questions so it was a, a pretty smooth uh, experience uh, from that standpoint i'm pretty sure they should have named the chat window the heckling window uh, that <laughs> seemed to be the most uh, prominent use Absolutely. of it. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, uh, one of the things about the DNA community is that uh, we, uh, we, all, we, we all know each other, or after a couple of conferences, we all know each other. And so it's a good time to spend with each other and then uh, do just like we're doing here. Um, uh, in a relaxed session, uh, give out good bits of information that you go and make use of later. And uh, what good is that if you also can't be heckled or um, all right, well, uh, taking a look at some of the sessions, um, I'll, I'll mention that if you were a, uh, an attendee uh, for the conference, 
then we did record those sessions. Uh, part of the process in Hopin um, allowed us to have recordings that we uh, processed and then were able to put up after the fact uh, so that if you were, uh, for instance, catching um, Joseph Craig's uh, session in the very beginning of the first day, uh, but you really wanted to also catch Cassidy's session, uh, you could you know, go watch that video afterwards. Um, those videos have had a pretty good reception. Um, I think that um, some of the stats that I just heard recently were that the, the video recording that's been watched the most has been watched an additional 50 times. Um, so you had <clears throat> 200 people on the day of the event in different sessions, 200 people divided by five, uh, four spots. Um, uh, but then 50 more people watch afterwards. Uh, that's pretty much like having one more time that, that session would have run. Um, so that's, uh, that's pretty good. Um, but, uh, you know, kind of running through these, um, uh, I guess one more thing about those videos is, um, David, do you have an idea of how long those videos are going to remain up and, uh, and available? Um, myself, I haven't paid attention to that part, but I might encourage people who want to see those videos who were participating in Demon Summit to, uh, to go watch those soon. I can't imagine they're going to be up three years from now. And uh, the time to get that information and make sure it's still viable and fresh is sometime within the next couple of months. Um, do you know any more about that, David? Or Mark, can I turn that question to you? I would guess they're going to be evergreen. Really? OK. Yeah. And maybe even at some point, they'll be made public. So we'll see. Yep, same thing. <laughs> All right. <Hi>, Mark. Mark. <laughs> <clears throat> well, uh, you know, kind of running through some of the uh, sessions and things, um, uh, Mark, David, uh, do you guys want to point out any of the sessions that uh, you know, came to mind that uh, you were impressed with or uh, you thought were good examples of things that people come to some to, to pay attention to and to learn? Well, there was one thing in that first slot there that I wish was three hours instead of one hour. Uh, it was so good. Uh, but he obviously didn't have enough time, but that's Daniel Velotis' session there on his, uh, he called it a spa module template for the new age, but uh, it, it, it spa is kind of, yeah, it's interesting. <laughs> interesting mm -hmm. choice, but it's like, it's a, it's a great new template um, set up. It's, you know, kind of like uh, anything you could ever dream of and imagine is included in this thing. So it's quite opinionated, but uh, is definitely modern and, uh, leverages web components, which I'm a huge fan of uh, for building modules and in DNN. But that was a really great session that I wish was extended a, <laughs> a lot. So if you watch any of them, if you're a developer and interested in getting started uh, quickly with a really powerful tool that you can pick and choose, you know, what you want, and what you don't want, uh, that's a good one to start with. Um. Uh, we'll, we'll pay attention to those and we'll uh, make sure to invite uh, Daniel and, and others like that on and we'll, uh, we'll turn those into deep dives uh, for SoFry. Sound good? <laughs> yeah, so we'd have to do like, you know, three subs. Two-parter. Three-parter. <laughs> yeah, two of them, yeah. <laughs> well, um, you know, kind of as we go through, Mark, jump in if, uh, if you have any that uh, come to mind. Um, I was going to mention that, um, you know, through the day there were uh, two or three different sessions that focused on the same topic, which is, um, you know, managing your DNN instances through updates and system upgrades, uh, whether you are talking about uh, tips and tricks for getting through uh, unscathed as best you can, uh, tips and tricks for having good and easy to roll back backups. Um, there were several of us that uh, did sessions that uh, were talking about that. Um, Peter Donker uh, talked about building DNA yourself. Um, Will Stroll, which I think that was the second day. Uh, no, first day. Uh, he did DNA upgrades made simple. Uh, myself on the second day, um, I did upgrade and migration scenarios. Um, so um, kind of one of the topics that was around frequently was uh, working with those DNA instances and um, you know, things you can do to help prepare. Um, I've had in the past uh, people jump up from a session like that and say, that tip was worth the price of coming here. That made my whole year worthwhile uh, because of that one tip that you, you just shared. And so uh, it's kind of nice to have your experience and 
uh, the things that went well and more often than not, the things that went horribly wrong um, to help benefit other people so that they learn and they benefit from those too. Um, uh, in that- Hey, uh, hey Ryan, uh, Dave Weinstein. I, uh, I wanna say two things about the DNN conferences. The Miami conference, the cost of the admission was paid for for me when I walked up to reception to check in with my suitcases the first day yeah. and I met you <laughs> and I said, you know, I'm here to figure out how to secure my DNN website. You said to me one word, Cloudflare. <laughs> so that pay, that Miami pay, you know, that I could have left after that. And, and it was because Cloudflare has saved my life this past year and a half, two years. That is but, fantastic. Yeah, that was that was awesome. And then uh, <laughs> You might. Th I, I love uh, Chris Hammond's configuring your DNN development environment. Because mm. that's all. I everything I do is custom development. Uh, I, I just I write you know new modules every week for my clients, and uh, that one I found to be, you know, as a developer, a, a, you know, the dyed in the wool developer of DNN modules that are all custom. You know, I couldn't sell any, but although some of them might be you know, usable, but that was a great. There we go. That was me scrambling just to find it so I could highlight it on screen. Um, yeah. uh, Chris Hammond I, I, has I been. Do, I would do a Cloudflare presentation for people at the at you know if there's something coming up in the mid. Okay. Mid -term. I know. I'm sure you'll be talking about it later, but. No, I, I did a Cloudflare presentation at Baltimore in 2015. Yeah. Oh. Um, I was and then I did another one at the first uh, DNN summit in Denver. Um, should bring it back up again. It's it's perennial, and there are things that are different. Yeah, I'd love to. And, you know, it's a it's a it's a must must have tool. So mm -hmm. maybe in the next one, I know you guys are probably going to talk about there being some quarterly or semi annual interim meeting between the big summits. But what I think hey. he's trying to say, is, Ryan, I think he's volunteering to present on Cloudflare at the next Southern Fraud. Oh, that's, I what like I, that. that's what I heard out of that. I don't you know, know what you heard. That's what I heard as well. I, I might have interpreted oh. it the wrong way, but uh, your your interpretation is much better. I like that. Oh, yes. <laughs> Put in mouth disease. So okay, but yes, I would I would volunteer to do that next time. I've got a lot of current current experience with uh, actually using it in a disaster recovery scenario right now. It's it's really it's really cool because it does a think... DNS failover in a disaster. So maybe that could be the theme. I, you know what? I think we just booked it. I think that sounds fantastic. I think right. that's um, solidified the deal right there. You right? know, I can, I can speak to DDoS attack uh, mitigation and DDoS um, help uh, as part of it. And so we can, uh, we can yep. tag team and pass exactly. information back and forth. Beautiful. So, you know, this, this that we're doing right now is also what's great about DNN conferences. Um, uh, I have uh, run to conferences before and come out of a session where Bogdan is speaking and I'll say, hey, I had this idea for XYZ and I always noticed that you had ABC and your DNA sharp modules, but have you ever thought about one, two, three? And he'll say, yes, I have. And then we all go to lunch and we all keep talking about those ideas. Um, uh, David, you mentioned uh, you know, Chris Hammond here. Um, Chris has been, uh, you know, one of the trainers. Uh, his materials are certainly gone through in the development track. Um, but one of the things that I would hope we can work into next year's um, GNN Summit is that training track, uh, because um, hour-long segments, hour-long sessions are a wonderful introduction and, and bite-sized information that you can take away. Uh, but if you really want to deep dive that full day skinning and theming or that full day development uh, track is really beneficial. Um, so uh, I'm gonna see if we can help you know, bring that in. And well, um, Scott uh, Wilkinson has done uh, development training. Will Stroll has done development training. Uh, in the past, Chris Hammond had done development training. So- Well, you know, uh, the, the, the fact that they'll, you know, if, if you pay for it and you can get the recording of those and you, know, you pay for one, but you can go to three because they're recorded. Mm -hmm. And that's the benefit. That's the real benefit to me yeah. of the virtual. You had the built-in yeah. recording capability versus. So I talked to Mitch and a couple of people after Miami. Is you know, these are so valuable. We, you know, we should have digital you know cameras. You know, 
in every room recording these mm -hmm. sessions because there's mm -hmm. gold in them their sessions right but with the virtual <laughs> aspect of these you know, I can go they're back. They're automatically recorded. Yeah. They're automatically recorded. I can go back and watch it and watch it again. And I would pay for a full track training. And then, you know, if, if I can go see the other two that I missed. Yeah. The um, Some of the logistics uh, issues around a physical location, being in a conference center or being in a hotel, um, sometimes means that uh, we have to deal with their AV team. Sometimes means that when we're wanting to get video recordings, it's not feasible. Uh, either from a, a, a structural or, or just a utility setup type of thing, uh, but other times from a cost perspective of getting those those rooms recorded and the uh, speakers recorded in a way that's going to be meaningful for a playback later. Um, but here, you're doing what we naturally do on, on meetings online, and you are speaking and recording, and you've got your screen, and it's a higher quality recording. Um, now, we did have some issues with uh, the hop in recordings. Uh, there were some that had some digital or technical issues, and hopefully that's res resolved uh, before we use it again next year. Um, but uh, another thing to kind of a rough jump, there wasn't a smooth segue. Um, but another thing to mention about the DNA community site um, is that um, I appreciated how Will Stroll was using um, his blog post in the DNN site, a community site, to post the notes from his sessions. Um, I'm gonna pull together the notes from my sessions. Most of the time I put uh, the notes from my sessions into the Southern Fried website, which you know is where we post things and I'll continue to do that. But um, I think that the DNN community website is a great location to put those resources and those links as well. Um, and so far I have seen Will Stroll post up his, uh, but as we continue to talk to people who were speakers and presenters, um, I'm gonna encourage and direct them to put their materials and put their content over on the DNA community site. That way, like David said, maybe it becomes evergreen. It becomes perennial and, and helps build the content that's there and available on the DNN uh, community.org site. Um, okay. Um, I've got another topic to move to in just a moment, but I'm going to uh, circle back to the chat and circle back to the group of uh, folks who are here online with us. Um, uh, just kind of opening it up. Um, does anybody have any other you know, thoughts or, or um, session memories or things that you want to relay uh, from the time that you might have had at uh, Dean and Summit? And meanwhile, I'll check the chat to see if there's some good questions or good things to bring up. Has the playlist from YouTube from the summit been posted on the dnncommunity.org under resources, maybe video library, break those down. I mean, then it's kind of one stop, just a suggestion. And I'm curious about, you know, brainstorming whether or not video assets could be something uh, valuable to the uh, uh, community uh, organ organizing committees and whatnot, if there's been any kind of agreement or, had you talked to the speakers about distribution of, of assets and if, if there's permission available there and and uh, yeah. stuff like that, just things I've, I've been thinking about. Uh, David just posted 31 hours of chock full DNN goodness. And it's um, like, he's DNN right, connect. you know, yeah. there's no reason why people can't relive the experience, um, you know, wa watching those sessions. Uh, those are all, right, all really good questions. Right now, those videos are private uh, mm -hmm. to attendees only, but I think there's ideas at least floating around of those potentially being opened up. Mark may be able to speak to a little bit of that. I don't want to put you on the spot or anything, but. Uh. Yeah, sure. Those, those videos are intended to be for the participants who, who paid to go to the conference. Um, that It's going to be that way for a while, maybe a year or more. And at some point, it'll be a, a good decision to uh, open up maybe some select videos or maybe all of them. But at some point when um, the people who paid for the course want to get their value out of it. So uh, when that has run its course, I'm sure that we'll be doing some extra things with those videos. But until that time, it really should be reserved for those who went to the course. Yeah, uh, I've, I've seen, seen some conferences. Yeah, may, maybe just let me split something here. It, the videos only captured the screen and the projection of the presenter and you don't get the interactive experience that you experience by paying for the event just to split those two into two different definitive things being at the event is what you paid for watching these videos 
You don't get that interaction. It's a one-way yeah. delivery uh, system. Just raising that point for your consideration mm -hmm. in the future. Yeah. Uh, David, you were going to say? I was going to say, you bring up a good point. Uh, Gift, there is room on the community site for video content to be a little more prominent. What is available in public, you know, to, to everyone and available. That would be a great endeavor for somebody to take on uh, for the community site. Um, well, remember, I also have about 30 hours of content as well, and I don't know what right. to do with that. I don't want to distribute that under my own brand. So perhaps we can uh, look at how we can get all of that content out where it can be digested by people who may be interested in the community. Uh, Jeremy, um, reach out to me at some point um, offline and I'll, uh, I'll kick around some ideas. I mean, it's uh, it's not the greatest thing for, since sliced bread, but it's something that uh, we put together a long time back and um, I get a lot of benefit out of it. Um, the main thing about what we put here on our Southern Fried website is a video section where I manage myself. Uh, when I think about it, I go and load it up with more YouTube videos that are either ones that we did from our SoFry videos or you know categories, just like you had in the um, uh, agencies section. So we have event videos where we have things from previous DNN summits or DNN conferences, um, DNN Google Hangouts, um, module reviews. Um, that's a night session I gave at DNN World years ago. It's certainly not an exhaustive list, but the point is the system is made we could take it and drop it in another location in a couple of hours or less. Um, and if, uh, you know, adding videos to the DNN uh, community site is something that we want to try and do, then I'll be glad to help work on this and make it a little more robust uh, to put it out there. Um, so, uh, so Gifford, just kind of wrapping up your, your thing about videos. I don't want to say the videos were an afterthought with this particular uh, Dean and Summit, um, but it was something that wasn't planned originally all the way through because we didn't know what technology was available and what was present with Hopin. And to some extent, there were some Hopin releases very close to when we had the conference that gave us even more features than we had before. So I think that in the next few times we do this, you're gonna see a better plan, a more cohesive plan that describes what's gonna be done with those things, maybe a faster rollout of access to them and, and some stuff like that. Um, I've been well, to some conferences in the past where you know that the videos are being recorded. If you paid, you can watch them. And then something like two years later, they become you know open promotion for coming to next year's conferences and you know, something like that. Maybe, maybe that's in the future. The only well, thing I would say about the recording is the fact that they could not make the main screen bigger because sometimes the code on the video, like I cannot see that because the screen gets a bit too smaller. And I understood yeah. that was something to do with hop in. So I hope they kind of fix that. Yeah. Yeah. Hop in has, when they do the releases, they're unannounced, they're on the fly. They, they are the most ragtag crazy bunch of cowboys uh i act I, you know I, I actually you know have have pretty severe issues with with these guys the way they run things but the platform you know it, it it's 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 in my future to build something similar let me put it that way so that these things can be done competently by people who respect their their customers um the other thing that um I just wanted to bring up is uh, Ryan. You mentioned you know some of the technical difficulties trying to get brick and mortar event sessions uh, recorded and stuff like yeah. that. Um, if Hopin does keep its socks pulled up, or we have alternatives like this, then a lot of that those headaches could be eliminated by doing a hybrid event. So you have a platform like this. You have people who can attend from all over the world that otherwise couldn't. And uh, you know, you, you get some tripods and and um, and do uh, you know do some live feeds for all your sessions, and everybody around the world can enjoy those in real time. So, uh, I'm so excited that you guys have gone through this experience. <laughs> I can't tell you. Yeah, I feel your pain. <laughs> it's it's funny you should mention that. That is an excellent segue. One um, of the complicated. Um, issues with setting up a conference like this, um, you know, bringing a couple hundred people, 300 people to, um, to Denver, 
to the, the convention center there or to the um, hotel and convention center that we were at in Orlando. Even though these cities um, vie for convention traffic and they want uh, you to bring your conference, no matter you know, big or small, uh, to their locations, there is an industry around this that has certain standards and certain requirements. Uh, so for instance, uh, right now, is the time period in March, April, May, where if we were gonna be in person in Orlando, uh, again for 2022, we would be looking to lock down those contracts, to paying for the hotels, to starting to negotiate, you know, the cost of food and beverages and how much AV equipment help and support we need. Um, those things are all done in contracts that can be binding and can be difficult to work through. Um, I uh, work with, uh, you know, a few different companies where their primary business is putting on trade shows, putting on conventions for different user groups or different associations of, of people. Um, uh, and those companies barely, barely kept their shirts um, after quarantine and COVID because it was difficult to cancel and say, hey, we're obviously not going to have a conference. we got to cancel everything. You might lose you know, thirty to sixty thousand dollars worth of deposits, and uh, those hotels, which are also struggling, uh, don't feel inclined to get that money back. So it's a dicey time to plan an in-person conference. Um, we can all hope that with uh, quarantines, um, you know, con uh, continuing to have improvements on on the global situation, and with um, uh, inoculations and uh, you know shots helping people be. Uh, safer when they're traveling. Um, it's still something that's difficult. Uh, we don't know really what's going to happen in six months for sure. And it's very difficult to, to put on the line all that money that you need uh, to have um, to have those reservations made. And um, so, uh, you know, the, the plans for 2022 are still being discussed right now. Um, now, David mentioned um, earlier, you know, a more frequent more regular uh, kind of conference or convention. Uh, that was one of the polls that was asked was, you know, would you like to do this again in a year? Would you like to do this again sooner than a year? And um, people, uh, people responded positively. They said, yes, they'd like to have one, another one uh, shorter than in a year. Um, now, I'm not saying that SoFried is the greatest thing ever and that you get all that same type of interaction, but you certainly do get time spent with a presentation, time spent with with material and information. So I'd encourage people to say, hey, come come uh, hang out with us uh, every month, uh, watch the videos from SoFry every month, and that gets you some of your uh, conference uh, type content regularly, on, on the regular. Um, but there were you know, good poll results uh, saying that people want to have it more regularly. Uh, that said, we're still, you know, beginning to talk about and plan out, uh, you know, what should happen in February, 2022. Um, and um, I won't steal the thunder or, or A, I won't presume to say that anything is, I've heard being discussed is definitive. Uh, it's still being discussed, still being played out. <clears throat> but I also want to uh, steal the thunder for, uh, for Mark or Cassidy or, or Mitch uh, who are planning out uh, some of these ideas of where we might be. But a hybrid conference is what's being discussed. One in which we might do exactly the same thing that we did this time in Hopin have everything exactly the same so that you have your speakers this close to you, you have video recordings, um, you have easy management of the tracks, you can you know, jump around and you can participate and join the conference if you are anywhere in the world, whether you can travel or not, you can participate. <clears throat> but what if we also interweave that with a physical event and have a hotel or a location in which we have, you know, parts of a ballroom. Uh, we have, uh, you know, the traditional party uh, in these conferences is called DNN After Dark. Um, uh, we have, uh, you know, those social hours. Uh, we have lunch. We have an opening keynote in person with breakfast in the morning sometimes. Um, to have Everyone who wants to attend in person have a location. We go to those locations and we attend in person um, so that we can have DNN After Dark. We can have networking where, yes, the networking um, speed dating is, is fun, 
but we can also get together in, in a group and, and see each other for the people who are comfortable traveling and who have the ability uh, to travel. But then when it's session time, everybody goes back to their rooms, gets on their big screens and computers and sits in a nice, away from your office, away from your house, um, out being an extrovert, doing the things you want to do out in the real world, um, place where you can then get away, um, still attend the conference, be online and participate in those. You know, maybe we put them up in a, you know, a big screen and we do something where there's a group, but it could easily be facilitated by each person having their room and going up to the videos in their rooms and doing their computer work for each session and then and speakers too. You know, speakers would travel to that location, go to their room to uh, set up their laptops and give their presentation. And then uh, when it's two o'clock and time for the, um, uh, you know, DNN business review uh, roundtable, uh, everybody goes down uh, to the, uh, you know, to the ballroom. And so then you have you know, a couple hundred people uh, there in person. Um, so it's, it's an interesting idea. And it's one that I don't know that I would have conceived of myself. Well, every, um, all, all these ideas build on each other. It just dawned do. on me <clears throat> that why can't DNN people gather in clusters around the world? Mm -hmm. So Absolutely. they all go, they all go to whatever pub or whatever uh, cafe, you know, if there's three or four of them that are in, that are in the same community and we all gather on hop in and, and there's a, you know, interaction. We can have, a, there's a we group can have an East Coast group, group, group and a West Coast group, group gathering together. Everywhere. Right. And yeah. when everybody joins, joins in a session, I mean, you can, you can, you can use your phone to use audio and, and, but you can have up on the screen, a big screen TV, you know, 10 different locations represented by 10 different clusters of people that have gathered together in small groups. Yeah. So I've never, that ever crossed my mind before. Brilliant. Mm -hmm. Uh, so there are some really exciting ideas being kicked around and I think some exciting locations being kicked around. So um, stay tuned for that information that'll come out you know, when ready, um, but I would hope soon. Um, but that's kind of what's being discussed is, you know, the same thing again, but hybrid mixed up with some new ideas. Uh, David, uh, is Mark still on? Yeah, they have Mark's there. Um, uh, any other uh, things you want to add in kind of as we wrap up uh, our session here uh, with a recap of, of DNN Summit? Any any parting thoughts? I'd love to hear if anyone else has any uh, kind of like input of what, what their experience was like. I know Heather mentioned in the chat that she thought it was great. Uh, mm -hmm. well, what stood out to you? You know, what, 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 was, what was great about it? Oh, yeah. I mean, uh, I hadn't been able to go since 2016 when it was in Maryland uh, because I work for the government and <laughs> our budget is zero <laughs> for these things. So it was really good to be able to do it virtually. Um, the main reason that I wanted to do it is because I, I do always feel like I'm the only <laughs> person who knows what DNN is. So um but it was it was really good. Um, as you probably knew, if you attended the two upgrade sessions, <laughs> that was one of my main pain point right now. So I'm going through an upgrade uh, from evoke bleh, evoke content 8.4.1 uh, to 9.6.4. So mm -hmm. that has been a big journey. <laughs> For me, so I just wanted to say um, I know Will is not on here, but thanks to him and thanks to you, Ryan, for um, those sessions because I wrote furiously through both of them <laughs> and I incorporated it all into this big, massive checklist that I have going. So it's actually been going a lot better since then. So I just wanted to say thanks for that. That's, that's a perfect soundbite. That's excellent. <laughs> <laughs> you may quote me. <laughs> um, um, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Heather. I'm sorry. Oh, I was going to say, I mean, it, it's, it's just been, been really, uh, really good. And um, uh, the networking thing and the uh, expo booth made it a little bit more like a real conference. So I'm a reformed shy person. So 
it took me a while to hit the networking button, but I was glad that the first person I um, got to see was Alessandra. So I got to meet her and that was really awesome. So it was like, you know, I wish we could have had like an hour chat, you know, maybe with like a, you know, cold beverage of choice, you know, right? talk all that stuff over with, but it was just really good. I felt a lot of camaraderie, um, which was great. So um, Summit, all, all of the sessions were great. I really, really enjoyed them. I don't know that I'd be able to attend an in-person uh, conference, even in Orlando, um, just because of budget and right now because of COVID, even though I'm going to have the second shot next month, I really am probably not going to be gathering in clusters of <laughs> yeah more uh, than so, family members really for so you're not ready you're not ready to host uh, DNN uh, DNN goes to Washington so we're, we're you're not ready to to help us host a, a, a DNN I was going in to say right? what about we bring it to Maryland <laughs> I can yeah. know. let's bring it there I, I do like Maryland definitely <laughs> you know the uh, the DC area is is nice sure Joseph Craig would would uh, approve. <laughs> but yeah, I, I just think that, you know, I'd love to have this continue um, maybe, you know, six months from now, have a have this kind of hop in kind of experience. And then, you know, you could have the in person, maybe they alternate or something like that, because mm -hmm. I'd, I'd really like to be able to attend however I can. So whether that's uh, virtually or I do a GoFundMe. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, we but, all send you there. Yes, we can do that. <laughs> uh, but that's all, that's, that's what I wanted to say. I just, I really loved it. And it, it reminded me to get back on the Southern Fried DNN meetup schedule, so. Nice, nice. thanks for e that. Excellent. Uh, and like I know- There's uh, six sound bites in there. And Ryan, I know this was the, first time that Aaron Lopez had actually presented uh, at a conference. So maybe he could share a little bit about a perspective of speaking and what he would have to say to anybody that's ever even thought about speaking. Uh, Cause I think this guy's hooked now. <laughs> All right. Honestly, that's Canadian. exactly it. I got to run everybody. Thanks for having hey, me Hey Gifford, on. good to see you buddy. Glad yeah, you came. I hope we can catch up soon, everybody. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Hi Gifford. That's yeah. the Gifford Watkins, everybody. <laughs> He's representing the East Coast. I'm the West Coast. <laughs> but um, yeah, it was an absolute blast um, speaking. So it, it was actually also my first DNN Summit. The only other conference I've been to was DNN Connect in 2016 in Spain. And um, it, was, it was a lot of fun to, to present um, and to come up with a session and and all that kind of stuff. And uh, I've been sort of a long time lurker in the community. I've been in DNN since 2006, but a long time lurker. And then to finally get a present was just so much fun. And um, it was really great to just meet people directly as well for the first time. Uh, a lot of people who I just know their names, but haven't actually been able to meet. But um, mm -hmm. the cool thing too, was that it, it you know, speaking for the first time, it's um, it feels like a daunting task, but then once you get into it, it's actually incredibly fun and, and very, um, easy breezy in a way like it. Yeah. And, and I guess having a community who's so into it already and like, just sort of, they already kind of know what you're talking about somewhat. It's, it's, uh, mm -hmm. makes it a lot, a lot nicer of uh, an experience. So yeah, I had a lot of fun doing it. It's fun setting up my room to, <laughs> to make Look it pretty stage yeah. <laughs> i did a lot of staging as well like no yeah no this is ugly put all the funko pops showing up <laughs> um you know the the advice uh given to writers is uh, write what you know and uh that's the same advice for speakers if you spend time whether you're a developer or a you know, skin uh, developer or or an integrator or just a DNA administrator, and you find yourself doing something regularly that you've, you know, built up some experience with, that could be a topic, you know, uh, you know, what you know about open graph and making those uh, thumbnails show up on uh, Facebook posts when people post them, 
that's something you've done 16 times, but somebody else hasn't done once yet. And if you can share that information and get them started on it, that's a, that's a great session. That's, that's a perfect session right there. Um, Cloudflare and getting started with Cloudflare was what I needed to do for a bunch of clients. And that turned into a session that I gave, you know, in Baltimore. Um, uh, we need all kinds of, of people to present and you don't have to uh, be a teacher. You don't have to be a developer. Uh, you just have to have some experience and be ready to share that experience with people who, just like Aaron said, are eager to eat that up and make it easy for you to deliver it. So um, uh, when we post the call for speakers, uh, which will happen towards the end of the summer um, for 2022, um, you know, take a look at that and think about the types of things that you know how to do and the stories that you've had and turn that into an hour long hangout session. It'll, it doesn't even have to be an hour. It's, it's, uh, it's 40 minutes uh, that you end up doing for your session material and the rest of it is meeting and conversation and questions. Um, uh, but uh, two, I don't know if it was on the beginning of our call or if we did it um, before we started recording the SoFry meeting. Um, but one of the things that was um, uh, clear out of the statistics that we could see um, from the polls of users was the type of people who were there. And um, at some of our conferences, it might be 50 or 60% developers. And at that point, the content and the tracks and the keynote sessions are all very developer focused. Well, that's still 40% of people who might be marketing people, content management people, um, People like myself, I mean, I am a developer and we do things, but you know, we consider ourselves DNN integrators. We're problem solvers. DNN is the toolkit we play in. Um, so, you know, whether you are a content editor or a an integrator or a, a system, uh, you know, system maintenance and security updates person, there are plenty of other things aside from those development tracks which need topics. Um, uh, my brother does a lot of work straight in the DNN database, and he feels like uh, the database doesn't get as much love and, and marketing attention as, uh, as other parts of DNN, and I keep pushing him. He should give a, a database-focused uh, session one time. Um, uh, you know, David Poindexter and, and the Envisionative uh, group of folks, um, they do things that are about skinning and cleaning things up and making things optimized. Um, um, Hey, Ryan, if I can get our content strategist to present at DNN Summit, you can get Dustin to present at DNN Summit. Come on now. I agree with you completely. And, and Dustin says, I'm busy running the, the, the check-in booth, so I can't be a speaker. But I really think I can, I can twist, twist him in, into doing that. I think he'd be really good. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Alessandra's presented on, uh, on Evoke topics, on... Um, uh, uh, liquid content uh, topics, uh, but she yeah. could just as easily jump into skinning and theming and do those types of things. Everybody has something that they're specialized in and that they've spent some some blood, sweat, and tears learning, and that's the knowledge that is great to share with the community. I heard Steve was going to do something on Tailwind. Uh, he and Aaron were going to do a co-session on Tailwind CSS or something. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, David, I didn't know you were a comedian. <laughs> <laughs> we, we do those sessions regularly just not recorded and there's no audience oh yeah i think it's just, our, just read his blog or something i don't know right? <laughs> it's just our echo chamber of tailwind <laughs> that's right well hey, uh, i wanted to toss out this is jeremy i just wanted to toss out two or three quick things about the event um, one thing I really enjoyed was I have uh, some employees here that if I don't push them, they'll just do everything in WordPress. And after attending the event, I've got two out of three uh, very interested in DNN and doing a lot more. So I really appreciated that coming out of it. Um, another thing that was uh, a real highlight for me, at least socially, was uh, at the very end, Will Stroll. We all got together at the end. There was like 20 or 30 people online. And uh, later in that evening, we started playing Quiplash and some other of those You Don't Know Jack games. And I think that should become a thing and uh, happen more seriously less next time and get announced because that was fantastic, a lot of fun. And there was some drinking too, but whatever. And then one tiny regret about the whole thing. 
I don't have any swag. I don't have a mug. I don't have a t-shirt. I, I, oh, I can't. No. What I, I, Ryan, Ryan, oh, there. You fix that. Judging. You got to do something. So, um, uh, These so I, special people were getting it. Yeah, I really, uh, really enjoy the giveaways and the promotions and the swag and the t-shirts and the mugs. And um, we talked about the idea of having packets of stuff to send out to people. Um, I am, I'm in favor of it. it it's something of what I enjoy about conferences. And so um, I can say that uh, I will endeavor to see if we can make that part of 2021. Because uh, how nice would it be for you to sign up and you know to to attend the conference, and then the week of the conference before it gets started, uh, you get a care package with a T-shirt and some postcards and uh, some stickers movies. to get you to get you in the mood. Um, you know, Ryan, it's you know this it's not a um, a nonprofit. You know, well, it's not a profit for profit. So I mean, if you raised the fee by ten bucks, it would cover the cost of UPS if you shipped it early enough. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, the only swag that's uh, going to go out is to the winner of the DNN uh, Jeopardy. Um, uh, I, Shut up. Uh, I was really thinking, um, Jeremy, that, uh, you know, the thing you were going to say was your, your solid regret was that you didn't join me to, uh, to play and then win uh, DNN Jeopardy. Um, um, you can talk about Will Stroll's games uh, all, all you want, but we had a DNN Jeopardy uh, event at the, uh, at the conference. Um, uh, it's a lot of fun. It's a game that I put together. Um, I was holding up this deck of cards. This is a DNN themed deck of cards. Uh, that is the prize that I give to uh, people who win DNN Jeopardy whenever we do it here on SoFry. Um, I've got a stack here that needs to go out to Don Gingold uh, from when he won, I think, Christmas's uh, DNN Jeopardy. Um, and then I have uh, the same post-it note on the opposite side because I need to send a deck to Will Stroll uh, because he won when playing here at uh, DNN Summit um, 2021. Uh, so if you haven't caught DNN Jeopardy before, um, there are some videos for it up on the Southern Fried website. I think it's a lot of fun. Um, uh, you know, with the DNN knowledge you have, you can uh, play at home and see if you can beat the contestants at, uh, at those crazy... Uh, fun and sometimes quirky uh, answers. Uh, Alessandra, what, what do you think about DNN uh, Jeopardy, Alessandra? Oh, I, I sucked lemons, but I loved playing it. It was like, I don't know. Do a question. Uh, okay, the question had no sense, like whatever. Yeah. I had one, one of the clients uh, that uh, I'm doing a project with now, she was there on the DNN and she was like, I was just screaming at the screen. Yes. It's that! <laughs> Hey, hey, Ryan, I meant to ask you, how did the uh, final Jeopardy question go? I never did get the debrief with you on that. Um, what was my final Jeopardy question? I don't recall. Oh, remember? Don't. We, uh, oh, we, wait, 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 wait. No one got it. <laughs> oh, <laughs> no, yes, the, the name of the, the thing with the letter thing. Yeah. The, uh, the uh, question. Um, the question <laughs> I, was... I spy. <laughs> I just remember my answer. I knew it was something like that. I'm not that old on the end. So the, uh, the final question. Jeopardy question was... Uh, uh, I think it was what, the, the, what was the only DNN version that, did, uh, that didn't have a number. That, that's excellent memory, uh, Alessandra. I she, know, because I got it wrong. It Not time. only wrong, but I got what so, I meant to say wrong, too. What, <laughs> I uh, said I spy instead of I you know, spy. And Alessandra said she'd never even seen or played Jeopardy before, so she didn't understand the whole ask as a question. Thing. I uh, like, I um, kind of uh, <laughs> never, never seen a show. I never seen but it show. was, you know, what DNN version number, what DNN version did not end in a number? And that was way back at DNN version one. There was a version that was 1.0.10 E as an Edgar. Um, and that stumped everyone. Um, Wheel Stroll got close. Close, um, but, but he no said one, one E instead of 10 E. Yes, no one got it exactly correct. Uh, so the uh, Alex Trebek and me uh, had to be very specific with that answer and no one got credit for the, for the final Jeopardy. But it was uh, quite rewarding. Awesome. 
I think that yes. worked out well then. <laughs> I, I posted, uh, I pinged David for many of those types of questions to, to have help with, uh, <laughs> with those things. And I appreciate uh, everybody who helped uh, give me give me several of these questions. Daniel Velatis has already started po uh, posting over a couple of ideas for my next Jeopardy uh, <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> tips and things. Um, anyways, these these games, because I mentioned them here, uh, you know, when I do post them on the Southern Fried website, you can watch the video so you can watch when we've played them. Uh, but there's also a link so you can just play it. And if you have DNN folks who are in your office and you want to play one of those games, you can just click it and you know, start up your own uh, you know, session to run that particular game. Uh, so it's a lot of it's a lot of fun. Well, we're coming up on eight o'clock here. I'm going to go ahead and uh, you know, switch back as we kind of uh, wrap up this particular meeting. Uh, sometimes we'll run for two hours, but most often it's about an hour, hour and a half, uh, depending on the session topics we have and the things that we're going to go through in a day. But I think here at eight o'clock, it's a, a pretty natural place for us to wrap up. Um, thank you very much to everybody for joining us online and for everyone who's watching. Um, after the fact for our video, um, I hope you had a good time. Uh, I encourage you to come join us anytime we have a Southern Fried event. It's always the third Thursday of every month, starting here at 6.30 Eastern time. Uh, the third Thursday of April looks like April the 15th. Um, the month starts on, a, on the first is on a, uh, Thursday. So the third Thursday is April the 15th uh, will be our next session. And uh, you heard it here first. Uh, there's a very good chance that we will be doing a DNN and Cloudflare uh, set of presentations and topics uh, where I'll, uh, I'll jump into and talk a little bit about DDoS um, protection and uh, some of the benefits that you get out of Cloudflare, helping you get out from under a, a, a DDoS load. Um, David uh, uh, sounds like he'll join us and uh, tell us a little bit about uh, you know, some of the other features. And um, I think he was yep. saying uh, migration or mitigation issues. Um, uh, so that'll be very interesting to, to hear how he's using Cloudflare. Okay, yep. All right. Well, thank you very much, everybody. I'm going to go ahead and uh, say goodnight to everyone. We'll stop the, uh, the recording and we will see you next time on uh, Southern Fried DNM.